Hi, how you doing? What I have for you today is a video about backpacking sleeping mats, mostly of the lightweight, perhaps even ultralight variety. Because you and I both know there aren't already 15,000 sleeping mat videos out there on YouTube. And you know, the world needs, needs one more from, from me. But what I got, what I got to add is my, you know, entertaining, sterling personality and my many years of experience using all different kinds of sleeping mats and really, really getting a good feel for the different types in the market out there. Honestly, too, I, I just want an excuse to talk about my sleeping mats because nobody, nobody wants to hear me. Nobody in real life wants to hear me ramble on about these. You know, I want to go over a general overview of your three types, your, your closed cell foam, your self-inflating here, and then your blow-up inflatable air mattress type that are really popular these days on the trail. What I hope to provide is it's just just a general overview, give people a better idea of the differences, and then I might have a little like bonus content at the end where I talk about my personal journey with sleeping mats because I've used quite a few in my over 15 years of being on the trail and I think my journey might relate to what some of you have experienced out there because it's such, it is such a crapshoot to figure out what mat is best for you. And I really don't have any great recommendations for you. I'm just going to talk about my experience. So I hope this is as fun for you as it will be for me. Let's get started. All right. Hello again. Now I'm going to jump right into the meat of this video and start talking about the different types of sleeping bag, sleeping pads. We're gonna start off with the closed cell foam variety. I got your two basic types, your, your roll up. This is a Thermarest Ridge Rest. This is a classic pad. And then this is, this is just to highlight, this is like a, some cheapo fold up or I got from uh, Sierra Trading Post. I don't even know what the company is, but it's just an example of the accordion style. Your Thermarest Z-Rest is probably the most popular. And I know that these, these sorts of pads are pretty popular with through hikers that don't want to worry about punching a hole in their sleeping bag and, and losing that thing on the trail because it cost them $200 and only lasted them you know, the first month they're on the trail. But I also don't know how the heck people can use these things past the age of like 19, okay? I'm dead serious. These things are very uncomfortable if you're a side sleeper. If you're a side sleeper, you might as well just give up the ghost with these. I probably misused that phrase, give up the ghost. But anyways, uh, I don't, you can't side sleep on these. So if you're a back sleeper, stomach sleeper, maybe these are gonna work for you. Even as a back sleeper, I can still really feel the ground. But what the everlasting appeal is, is just the simplicity and the longevity and the durability. Personally, I prefer this roll-up ridge rest over the accordion style because I feel like this is more durable. These egg crate style, these eventually these egg crates, they get compressed. And you can see these, if you can see it at all, they, they're already starting to compress on this one. And I really have not used this, this thing that much. So uh, my personal preference is these uh, because it, it isn't technically, it's not as thick as most of your 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 fold up egg crate closed cell foam. But when this is compressed, it really loses a lot of its stated stated thickness. So uh, that's my personal preference is this one, if I'm gonna use it. But most of the time what I use this for these days, I'm just using this to so supplement my sleeping, bag, sleeping pad if I'm car camping, or I'll turn it over to this side if I wanna get a little more reflectivity on the heat. This is the the silver metallic reflective side. And and that's pretty much, and, and if I'm doing like a workout in my apartment, this makes for a nice workout mat. So so that's, I, I would never carry this alone, uh, but I'm, I'm 33 years old. My, my joints are a little more sensitive than they used to be. But if you're younger or if you have joints of steel and you don't need a lot, uh, maybe this will work for you. What also blows my mind is when people use use like quarter inch or even like eighth inch foam pads for, for backpacking and, and that's all they use. That boggles my mind how that would ever be comfortable for anyone to use. 
but people do it. They say they sleep okay. And if you really want to get your sub six pound ultralight base weight, you got to get that quarter inch torso length foam pad, man. You know? The next type of pad I want to discuss is your classic tried and true self inflating pad. And this particular one is the Thermarest Pro Light Apex. I'll discuss a little bit about this model, but generally, self inflating pads, they're, they, I think they were the, some of the first backpacking air mattresses on the market, and they combine uh, filled up air with, with foam to create a real firm, somewhat uh, comfortable experience. And these are the first I used. And self-inflating, they've, they've got a lot of style. There aren't too many companies making them. Obviously, Thermarest is your... <laughs> they've been making these for a long time. But I know Sea to Summit has some. REI has some. I saw Nemo just put one out on the market. So there's a few companies making these, although most backpacking companies have really transitioned to your blow-up air mattresses. There's still some of these out here. And they offer some particular advantages. First of all, self-inflating, they don't inflate all the way, but when they do, this particular one, the thermo, the Thermarest ones I've used work pretty well, and I don't have to do more than like five breaths to get it all the way, as opposed to 20, 30, however many breaths it takes with, it, with a full-length air mattress. Uh, the foam offers, I feel like these have a bit more structure, so if you like a firm surface, it, it offers that structure. You don't have to, uh, if, if, yeah, it just, it just feels a little bit more firm than your usual air mattress. And then the other advantage is that with the layer of foam, if this does pop a hole, it, it has some foam there and you can convert, try to convert to being a back sleeper for the rest of the trip. But there's a little bit of foam, a little bit of padding if it does pop a hole and doesn't hold air. The other advantage of these, the other advantage these have is they tend to have a little bit more durable fabric. This has like a 50 denier fabric. I know the Sea to Selma ones have a 30 denier fabric. And so a lot of your blow up mattresses don't have that, that sort of fabric to them. And then finally, what I feel is an advantage of the self inflating. I used self inflating mattresses. They were my first ones I ever used backpacking, like for a lot of people. And I have even though I didn't know the R value or the temperature rating of them, I felt that I was never really cold, even with sleeping with these in cold conditions. So in my opinion, although I don't have much, you know, like scientific evidence to back this up, <laughs> I, I feel that these hold their R value, or if not outperform their R value, more so than your inflatable mattress. Because I know there's a lot of reviews out there of insulated, self-inflating mat or insulated blow-up mattresses that people are saying, well, this doesn't, this says it's rated to 30, but you know, I was cold at 45 or whatever. There's a lot of that going on. And personally, in my experience, the self-inflatings, I feel like they've held up their R value, their temperature ratings pretty well. So I use these self-inflating pads mostly for the colder months because I felt like the value and the, the, some, the, the few ounces more was worth it to me as opposed to a slightly lighter blow-up air mattress. I got this one for probably half the cost of your typical insulated ultralight blow-up mattress. The thickness is two inches, but that firm surface makes it feel a little bit thicker than it is. Um, and I feel like it holds up that R value for the colder months. So that's, that's when I prefer to use these. In the summertime, I'm still using a blow-up mattress, but for the winter time, that's what I'm using. Your classic self-inflating mattress. We've all, we've probably all used them. We might've got started on them, we've heard of them. And, and they still have their usefulness in some ways. The last type of mattress I want to discuss is the king of backcountry comfort, the bell of the ball, the big kahunas, the grand poobahs, whatever you want to call it. The inflatable blow up air mattresses. Now there are quite a few variety of these out there. It's somewhat overwhelming and, and maybe you've tried a couple or a few or a half dozen or more. And you got all the different, you know, you got horizontal baffles and vertical baffles. And this one has like I beams with dimples and some have like these air sprung cells to mimic a mattress and, and all kinds of the V shaped 
air chambers. There's so many different varieties out there. It's hard to choose choose what works, but, but the advantages are pretty similar across the board. They offer the greatest thickness and potential comfort for their weight and size. It's hard to beat it. The self-inflating mattresses definitely can't beat it. Definitely not the closed cell phone mattresses. So that, that's your main advantage is, is this is gonna be the lightest weight for the thickness and comfort. Now we all know the advantages, but there are some disadvantages to these mattresses. They tend to be pretty fiddly. It's hard to find like the right, the right fit and feel in them. You never know. They might something might be four inches thick, but it might have a very bouncy pull raft feel, and it might be very, very fragile. Or they tend to have poor performance in terms of R value and temperature ratings. They don't work as well. I feel like they a lot of times they underperform their R value, whereas the self-inflating ones overperform their R value. Obviously, we know that they're more prone to holes. It's a little easier to get a hole in here, and then if you get a hole you're pretty much screwed for the rest of your trip. <laughs> you're gonna be sleeping on hard ground for the rest of your trip. There's, there's, no, there's no foam to, to help you out. And the last thing that's kind of annoying is that the, the prices of these tend to be pretty high, like $150 for non-insulated. And then when you get to the insulated models, they tend to be $200 or more for the insulated models, unless you can find a good sale. But it's, it's kind of annoying to have, to have to spend that much money to find one that just may not even be comfortable to you. And you don't know until you use it for a few nights. And at that point, you basically have to use and abuse some retailer's return policy or try to sell it on the secondhand market for this mattress you paid $200 for. And that's, that's pretty annoying if it doesn't work for you. So, so these things are not all puppy dogs and ice cream when you're using them, despite the clear advantage of their, their thickness and comfort for the weight. As you see here, I've got this Nemo Tensor uh, short, short length, torso length. And what I like to do with this is, is use it with this closed cell foam. So this closed cell foam, I can also use as a camp seat. So I'm really sick into one of those ultralight backpacking principles of multiple use gear. So I have the the torso length, three inch thick Nemo tensor for, uh, for, my, for my, my parts of my body that need more padding and then for my legs, which doesn't need as much padding, I use this foam pad that I also use as a seat. So that's what I'm currently using as my warm weather sleeping setup. And, and part of the reason too is that, like I said, there's, you can spend $200 on these and find out it doesn't work for you. And I just didn't wanna go through a bunch of varieties of, of inflatable pads. So I just was like, okay, what's the lightest weight pad <laughs> that I know is gonna be comfortable for me in this three inch thick Nemo Tensor. It's more comfortable for me than the Neo Air X Lite or the Uber Lite. So, so I just went with that and for eight ounces, that's great. Um, and, and I don't really need to bring the, the, uh, the pump sack with me because it doesn't take that much to blow up this torso length. So that's your, your inflatable blow up air mattresses, the kings of backcountry comfort, but it, it's not all rainbows and sunshine with these. There are a few disadvantages. Which one of these is my favorite I've ever used? I don't, I don't really know. Like I said, I've, I've used a large variety of, of inflatable air pads. I've used a few different types of self-inflating pads. I have to say, I so far, I think I'm liking the Nemo Tensor the best, but I'm not gonna give that as my recommendation because maybe, maybe you do need the four inches of comfort from the big Agnes models, you know? Or maybe the, the straight horizontal baffles of the, of the Neo Air X Lite work best for you. Or maybe you're a vertical baffle person. I don't know, I don't know. It's hard to pick favorites. I'm not gonna tell you which one is best because it's such a darn personal preference. All right, thanks for watching my video. I hope this was entertaining for you uh, because we all know there's 10,000 videos out there of, of backpacking mattresses. And, and for you to make it all through my review, that's just phenomenal. I'll see you later.